and hopefully hopefully this will go out like right before AEP opens up because that would be the perfect time. Yeah. Okay. Cool beans. Well, guys, welcome. Yep. Welcome back to the insurance panel. I am Matthew Murray. Always with me, I've got Nicholas Frumpkin, Vince Connell. And guess who, guys? I know you by, by the by the title, but we got the famous Justin Brock on. Uh, I had the pleasure of sitting down with this guy. This is past week. Um, sat shoulder to shoulder with the guy, and he uh, probably one of the funniest individuals I've ever I've ever met. Um, but also very humble and very good at what he does. So we're very excited to have him on. And just so y'all know, it's eight a.m. his time on a Sunday, and about nine a.m. a Sunday on our time. So this is the only time that we could really just everybody get together because we're, scheduling for this stuff is impossible. So Justin, we appreciate you being on. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. I really appreciate you guys having me. Sorry. I had to do it Sunday morning, but it's, uh, this time of year is complete chaos in the Medicare world. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it, it's hopefully by the time everybody watches this video, it's going to be right before AEP. So it's going to be a really good video for you to watch. Um, if you're a final expense agent or if you're a Medicare agent, but, this show is kind of predicated around final expense and uh, we, we wanted to bring on some Medicare stuff as well because it's peanut butter and jelly. Right. And I, I know you made fun of me, you know, or everybody makes fun of me because I'm this guy that has done final expense for four years and I'm still don't have my health license and I'm sitting next to a guy that's, you know, one of the greatest of all time when it comes to this stuff. And he's like, dude, why don't you just get your license? So <laughs> it's, it's, it's always great to have you on, man. So, Let's jump right into it, Nick. I know you have some questions for Justin. Well, yeah. I, I mean, um, I guess a lot of it is like, you know, as final exp expense agents out there, you know, we get told a lot, hey, you know, stay in your lane. Make sure that, you know, you focus on what you're good at. Don't get too distracted. Um, you know, stay, stay, stay tight and sell final expense. But the, the reality is the majority of the people that we talk to, are Medicare eligible and their Medicare is the single most important thing in their lives. Um, way more important than their life insurance, uh, probably more important than their car to them. Like, um, so it's always seemed to me that it's really important that if you're going to be going out there and talking to people that you at least know and kind of understand how the whole Medicare thing works. So um, it seemed like having somebody who's really an, a Medicare expert, um, a, a guru, if, if you would, um, come on and kind of talk a little bit about what what people need to know if they're going to be in people's homes, especially in this kind of October, November, December type of season when people are very worried about Medicare. What, what are the kinds of things that they should be keeping in mind, um, whether or not they sell Medicare, just because it's so present on, on prospects' minds. Right. So the first thing I would say is uh, on, a, on the reason final expense agents are told to stay in their lane is typically coming from the recruiting standpoint and then ingrained into the middle people, the middlemen recruiters, uh, because so many of the top line final expense recruiting agencies have seen that when people get fixated on Medicare, either A, they don't have those Medicare contracts through that final expense entity, um, or B, it detracts from their production on final expense. And, and so I can kind of hit on both because like, first of all, in the individual agent's interest on a, from a financial standpoint, it is certainly uh, in your best interest to, to at least, you know, cross sell the Medicare a little bit because you're building out and you're building out a, either a retirement or uh, a, you know, what if I get hit by a bus and I'm paralyzed? Well, Medicare money keeps on coming. So uh, there's, there's a, certainly a huge financial reason to do it. But the other big thing is when you're running into these people, it doesn't have to, it's not like all or nothing. Like, you know, a lot of people think, uh, well, if I do Medicare, it's so confusing. I got to get all into it. And I like what Neil Wright said when we were in Pittsburgh the other day, Medicare is the hardest thing to learn and the easiest thing to sell. You're selling the easiest thing to learn and one of the harder things to sell and to keep on the books. When you sell a Medicare Advantage plan or a Medicare supplement, that persistency is through the roof, even if you just you know, met them one time and signed them up, because people don't just go around changing it all the time. Very, you know, very few people do. So, so there's, a, there's a huge incentive to do it. Um, probably the biggest threshold is the learning curve on Medicare. Um, 
but I think that people convoluted. If somebody could sit down and watch uh, what what I did when I first started learning, uh, I got I came I came into the industry. My dad was an independent agent, and he was you know telling me go full fledged into Medicare, and that was what I learned from the beginning. And now we're in the reverse. We're scaling. We're trying to scale more on the final expense and annuity side, but we have this big base of Medicare. Um, but when I started learning, they're like, here's these Medicare and you handbooks. Here's the choosing a Medigap policy guide. And they're handing me these books. And I don't learn that way. Nobody's going to get me to sit down and read them. I, I've been in it six years. I don't, I've never sat down and read the Medicare and you handbook. Like I've pin, picked things out of that book to show a client that I know are there. But right. I learned watching consumer driven videos about Medicare. I'd go watch a video directed at consumers teaching me. And I just say, okay, I'm going to pretend like I'm signing up for Medicare and learn it that way. You can watch a couple of those videos and learn how Medicare works. When you get into the finite details of different plans, yes, it can get very, very confusing, but you just learn the basics and pick the plans you want to sell now. And then when somebody comes along and makes a compelling reason why you should sell another plan, which they're always trying to do, uh, you know, you, you find, eventually you'll find one and you'll be like, okay, new shiny object, let's do this. But you don't want to get detracted and be like, I'm going to sell every single plan under the sun. But I think there's a huge reason because you're sitting down in these houses with people and um, I can see it. I, I went out um, with a, a couple of final expense agents not too long ago, about a year ago, they came to Tupelo and they had some leads. And I, 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 what I was going to do is I was going to take some of their leads and send one of my guys out. And uh, that day so happened to be, it was like middle of summer and I wasn't super busy. I said, well, I'm going to go out with you guys and, and do final expense the way they were doing. And I had never done that because I, even when I did direct mail, when I first started, I was going out and getting in the house and trying to rewrite the meds up. That was my goal. I was the, uh, I was doing it on the Medicare side. And what they're, the way they're doing it, you know, it, it's difficult. I mean, when you get in the house and, uh, you, you know, having to kind of get in the house, having to overcome that threshold, I didn't fill that out, you know, stuff. Um, from me seeing it as a Medicare agent to me seeing it as a final expense agent, uh, I think that Medicare was so much easier to get in the house because <laughs> when I showed up right. and I'm like, I'm just here to, to look at your Medicare, you know, I got in so many more houses without the rude behavior. Maybe part of that was the income limits I was mailing. I didn't mail anybody under 25,000 in income. And I'm, I'm sure in final expense, you're mailing a lot of people under 25,000 yeah. in income, but, but it's the same thing now because in that market, you got Medicare advantage. So when you show up, um, and this, and this gets down to the whole door knocking for Medicare advantage thing, but when you're doing it for med sup, it's a lot easier. You can, you can, you can say, I'm just here to look at your Medicare supplement you get in there and they have Medicare Advantage, you could always talk to them about final expense, get a scope signed and come back later to talk about Medicare Advantage. But the, the fact is that you got in there to help them with Medicare and you can expand off of that. So uh, I could keep rambling on, but I'm going to kind of let you steer the conversation there. No, but that's, I mean, that's a really, that's a really important point is it is, you know, when you're talking about Medicare all the way around, like you do find that, um, or at least I find that my Medicare clients are friendlier, um, much more willing to give me referrals to other people. Um, I don't, I don't ask for referrals anymore. I just get referrals from my Medicare clients. I, yeah. I, I got maybe three or four referrals off the final expense in my life. And I have referrals from people I sold a meds up to six years ago that I still get, yeah. you know, I'm going out and seeing somebody in a couple of weeks because you know, Sally's, called up her friend and said, Hey, you're ready. You're getting ready to retire. You got to give Nick a call. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. so it's, it's a huge, it's a huge thing. Um, so for the people who are watching this that don't really know or follow Medicare, you mentioned a couple of things, um, that we may want to look into like for the final expense agents out there from their perspective, what's the difference between like a Medicare supplement policy and a Medicare advantage? Not like, literally the difference like mm -hmm. but like from from Lame if they're strange. looking at trying to sell a medicare supplement or sell a medicare advantage like what's what's it matter to them okay so um so medicare supplement requires nothing but a health license uh you know there's no uh in most states there's no um you know a hip there's none of that testing stuff 
it's amazing how many people don't know that. Like you come in contact and they're like, wait, I can already sell med subs. Like, yeah. You, some of them probably have the appointments to sell them with certain companies and they don't even realize it. Like if they're selling mutual of Omaha, it's highly likely that somebody, if they had a health license, went ahead and set them up with the whole thing and they don't even realize they can sell it. Um, if you can sell a cancer policy, you can sell a med sub. So, um, so that, you know, from a regulatory standpoint and what can I do and how easy is it to get it into med stuff is so easy to get into. It's so easy to understand. It's easy to capitalize on that market. Now, if you are, you, a lot of people, you know, you get, this is such a mixed reviews thing. And I think a lot of it is people having to get outside of their own head, but they think all their clients are Medicare Advantage clients is that once they learn anything about it, they're like, Oh, my client must be a Medicare Advantage client. Well, I've had rich people on Medicare Advantage. I've had poor people on Medicare Advantage. I've had rich people on MedSups. I've had very, very poor people, as long as they don't qualify for Medicaid, on MedSup. And so a lot of people think, well, my client's only drawing 1300 a month from Social Security. They have no savings, whatever. Uh, I still personally lead MedSup because I'm not, their, I'm not their budget person. They may have their house paid off. They may have very their, their lifestyle may be I go to church on Sunday I, I require about thirty dollars worth of groceries a week I'm very frugal I come from the old old way of life and they might have enough money where they want that meds up so that they can go to any doctor they want to and you know this is overgeneralization but really technically you could pretty much go to any doctor you want to if you got a Medicare and a meds up so that network concept is great um, you know now you run into somebody that's already on a Medicare Advantage plan, it's very difficult to talk them back to a med sub because they've already gotten used to in their budget having a zero premium plan. Right. Um, so, so that, you know, it's just, uh, it's almost psychological for the agent and the consumer both. Um, the agent has to realize that not everybody fits your, um, your in a box approach to Medicare and, the consumer, you have to, as an agent, you have to understand that the consumer psychology isn't always dependent on their income and assets either. It's dependent on how they were brought into the Medicare world. So if whoever brought them in pushed Medicare Advantage, it's going to be hard to bring them back to the other side. If they pushed meds up and you bring them to the other side, you, that's probably the most likely way to get somebody to complain because you're taking them from network Medicare or you're taking them from uh, no network Medicare to network Medicare. And that, that can get kind of fishy. <laughs> yeah. You were saying in, in Pittsburgh, like those uh, T65 leads or like, if you're the person <clears throat> running those, like you're setting the stage for that person mm -hmm. later on. And so you could be the one that's going to sell them the med sup or the Medicare advantage. And you know, later on. So in from, again, from a final expense standpoint, and I don't have my health license, Medicare advantage is, is a uh, cheaper, uh, no premium and med sup is more premium, but they have a whole lot more benefits that goes along with it. Correct. Yes. And um, you know, you get somebody retiring and they're paying four or $500 a month for Cobra or health insurance right now. Well, now you set the stage for what they can buy. So we sell, when we do Medicare advantage, it's normally Medicare advantage with the Heartland national hospital indemnity plan with a cancer rider on it. So I'm getting, I'm getting multiple products at one time. Um, and then the, on the med sup side, we sell a lot of med sup with dental and cancer policies with it, uh, as well as the drug plan. So, uh, and I, and I think a, a common thing for final expense guys, um, to note is a lot of them think, well, you know, Medicare advantage, oh, it's $251. And, th and this is such a mixed thing too. I, I'm, I've literally had people that say, why would I want to get into Medicare advantage? It only pays you $251. Well, first of all, that Medicare Advantage plan is $251 every year forever. <laughs> so right. as long as they keep it and are active on it. Uh, and it's also double that the first year if they're new to Medicare, plus the cross-sell environment on it's great. Plus, if you can help them with that, you can probably get more people who will down the road buy final expense and annuities from you. Um, so it, I think it's, you know, it's, it's, it, it could be either your platform or your cross-sell whether you have a large book of final expense agents and hey, AEP's here and you're thinking, do I buy a bunch of leads or do I just go call on my clients and see if I can help them with Medicare this year? Or, you know, is it, is it the platform where you say in the future, maybe I buy the Medicare leads and start building my retirement plan out and then come and cross sell those leads final expense. Um, I think there's 
find a lot of final expense agents are sitting on gold mines. Um, yeah. You know, a, a lot of people are buying a final expense agents book when they go to retire right now to cross sell them Medicare. They're looking for the ones that didn't sell Medicare almost to be like, well, here's your, your whole book so they can go out and, and call on all of them to sell them Medicare. So uh, I don't know. There's tremendous opportunity and there's, it's not a, it's not cookie cutter. It's not one way to do things. Um, there's in that meeting in Pittsburgh, there were people who are going to go out and, and sell their, their entire book this year. Or they're going to go across sell their book this year, Medicare. That's this, that's, that was a big thing. And, and uh, it was kind of eye opening to me because I'm like, you know, when I think of final expense, I, I don't, I think of the biggest dogs in final expense are on the recruiting side because they build up a team and they, they kind of build themselves out of it. And a lot of them quit producing themselves, unfortunately, but when they, um, when, and so when I think of normal final expense agents, I'm thinking of the guys making a hundred, you know, 150,000 a year, but they're in the grind. Um, but there were guys there that were, you know, you know, three, four, five hundred thousand dollar a year income final expense agents maybe had a couple of people on a team with them and, and they, they might have 10,000 clients out there between two or three agents that they could, they're really sitting on a gold mine because once they're in your book of business, you can go knock on their door. You can call them. You can do whatever you want to. They're your client now. So all that, all that regulation and regulatory stuff goes out the window as far as how to contact them. So that makes the, the, that a whole lot easier. No, and that's, and that's the huge thing, right? Like, I mean, that's my plan for AAP is to just sit down and dial all of my clients. That's what I'm gonna and do. that's what I do. That's what I do every year. It's like, I don't, I don't buy AAP leads. I just work in my regular business and then add an extra day of calling to set up appointments for myself to go talk to people about their Medicare. Um, and if, if you're selling Medicare Advantage, um, whatever hierarchy an agent's part of, they need to reach out to their hierarchy because if they're in a good one, Matt saw this, you know, with, uh, with ours the, or with the top line of the hierarchy we're speaking on in Pittsburgh, I'm not going to name hierarchies. I don't know how that works for y'all show, but right. they, um, the, the top line of this one is, is coming down with all these free leads mm -hmm. uh, going to people and it's, they're not free what it is. And I tried to explain this to somebody or to the, the crowd because a lot of people, I get asked about this. Why are there free leads on this side and not on this one? Well, what it is is CMS regulates how much commission you can make on a Medicare Advantage plan, but that isn't all the carrier is willing to pay. So they find other ways to pay you and they can't just keep giving you money. So they buy your leads for you. Mm -hmm. They'll give them to you. And there's a lot of agents in that room that were getting a hundred, 200, you know, free leads for AEP, depending on their size. Sometimes you divvy it up to a manager who might get a thousand to give out to five agents or, um, you know, but, but there's, there are leads out there. So if anybody in here is set up to sub Medicare advantage and you plan on, you know, going hard on AEP, you know, I'd be calling them right now trying to say, Hey, can I get any leads? And even yeah. if it's 50 leads, and, and these are not crap leads. I'm not talking about old B leads. I'm talking about freshly mailed leads yeah. from Humana or top line hierarchies. Yeah. I mean, the guy, the guy I was sitting next to before you got over there, Neil, I mean, he showed me like we've dropped like 70 or 75,000 pieces of mail in South Carolina alone. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, you, if you, I need if, to get my license. if you're trying to buy leads in Medicare as an individual, in October, you're too late oh, you're, you're because done. all the big lead houses and all the big hierarchies and the, the people with the Humana dollars and the Aetna dollars and the United Healthcare dollars, they've already bought all of them. So anything you're buying is somebody selling you garbage just because, yeah, yeah they're going to sell you something, <laughs> but it's probably going to be like they're mailing a repeat list a week after it was already mailed. Mm. So. Right. So no, those people aren't going to fill out the same card over and over again. They filled it out the first time they got it. Sure. Oh, there's your cat. My <laughs> menagerie. Um, well, that's awesome. I I think, and I, I know Justin was a, had to be a little bit late. He had um a bunch of people sleeping over his house. He's got a, a, a house full of kids currently. Um, so he's a little late, but I would like, and y'all can maybe, maybe Vince doesn't like Justin. Uh, or something, but I think I think we would really like to have Justin back on maybe yeah. for one more video because this is this is going to get cut short because Nick does have a hard out. He's got to be out at you know he's got somewhere to be at ten, which is currently twelve minutes from now, and he's probably got a fifteen minute drive. 
but Justin, if you're open uh, for another day at a different time for maybe Definitely. 30, 45 minutes, we would love to have you on because what we try to do for people is we try to set it up to where you have two to four videos lined up. So yes. we try to do like 15 or 20 minute videos. <clears throat> we usually try to block out about 45 minutes to an hour. So you yeah. definitely want to definitely give your spotlight. And we yeah. can do a thing where, cause I know AEP is coming up and that's probably going to get, I mean, like starting Tuesday, things are going to get nuts for you. Um, yeah. But if you wanted to, we can like, <clears throat> if you've got free time, I mean, always and sooner, but we can always do something, uh, come back and revisit this mid December and yeah. uh, talk about open enrollment and what the opportunities for people are there. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I think, uh, you know, a lot of people sleep on health insurance too, I, even more than Medicare. Most people know the money's in Medicare. Now you still got people saying there's no money in health insurance. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. I can, I can go write one health case. I've had health cases that came in that just on the health part and set up, we made three, $4,000 first year. So, uh, and you can uncover big life and annuity in when you're dealing with, self-employed 50 year olds with two kids you know yeah, that's what i wanted to get into with you on the short-term medical yeah huge oh, money. Time. huge money in short-term medical hospital indemnity and then uncovering you talk in a lot of those clients are 50 years old and 45 years old 55 and they're self-employed which and they don't want obamacare you know why they don't want obamacare it's too expensive you know why because their income's too high so you're talking about people with money um, and nobody wants to help them except some call center in Florida that they don't want to deal with. That's awesome. So well, market. well, sure. Well guys, it's, it's been a pleasure. Um, sorry, we couldn't take more time, but I know we're going to have Justin back on. And if, if you watch this video and you have questions for Justin, by the time we get to, you know, everybody sit down again, um, we, we should be able to, you know, email us at, uh, the insurance panel at gmail.com and, get some questions for Justin because uh, it's pretty rare. You know, Justin will actually talk to anybody. Go to, I'm sure if you want to plug your Facebook, uh, it's Medicare gurus, yeah. right? On I'm, Facebook. I'm going to plug it because I've had somebody even at the group the other day like, well, I'm in too many groups and I didn't want to, to overload myself with the groups. Well, first of all, Medicare gurus is the best group. So, <laughs> so uh, it is, group, for, it's, for it's, Medicare specific information, it's very, very active and it's, and there are people in there, that know more about Medicare than I do. I always tell people I know how to make money with Medicare because there's a lot of people that know more about Medicare granularly than I do. You may not make as much money in it as we do, but but we, you know, there's all different sides of it. So, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Medicare Gurus is, is, is what I normally plug. It's free. It's, it's really active. It's very, very beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'd love to have more people in there. And I'm sure there's people that watch you guys and pay attention to you that haven't heard of it. So absolutely. Probably. So yeah, so uh, reach out to us uh, at the insurance panel at gmail.com. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you comment. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the bell button. It helps you two algorithms. It helps more people. We want as many people to see this as possible because the whole point of this show is to help people. That's the whole point of this is to bring clarity to the marketplace and help people who have never seen something like this before, who are just getting into it, or might be a veteran who are looking for some extra ways to make income. And every time I talk to Justin, I want to go get my health license. So go get your health license. Go get your health like the present. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So Y'all have a good one. Thanks again. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely.